while the Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighter is slated to become the mainstay of the Pentagon's tactical fighter fleet. Not every one nation on Earth can afford to fly an expensive fifth-generation fighter. Even Russia and China are not likely to attempt to develop an all-fifth-generation fighter fleet. Instead, for the foreseeable future, the derivatives of the Sukhoi Su-27 flanker rear superiority fighter will make up the bulk of their tactical air arsenals. The most potent flanker derivative is the Su-35, which is a much improved version with vastly improved avionics, engines and airframe. In the years ahead, this latest flanker e is likely to proliferate around the world. To counter the proliferation of flanker variants, the US Air Force, Marines and to a far lesser extent, the US Navy will have to rely on versions of the F-35 even though it was never intended to be an air superiority fighter. It was and continues to be a strike aircraft with a robust air-to-air self-defense capability even though the Pentagon has pushed it to be a jack of all trades. How would a group of four F-35 fare if it were confronted by a formation of four Su-35? The most likely answer is that they would change course and call in the F-22 Raptors and F-15C, which are tasked with gaining and maintaining air superiority. Meanwhile, the F-35S would go on their merry way to their assigned targets. However, as history shows us, many times in war you do not always get to choose from the most optimal of solutions. If the F-35 were left to their own devices, they would probably be alright even against the Su-35 if they played their cards right. The F-35 pilots would have to use their stealth, onboard and offboard sensors and smart tactics that play to the F-35's strengths and avoid its weakness. That means using the jet's stealth and sensors to engage enemy fighters from beyond visual range and avoiding a visual range turning fight where the F-35 is vulnerable. Unlike a Raptor, which was designed from the outset as an air-to-air -air killer par excellence the F-35 was not. The Raptor combines a very stealthy airframe with a high altitude ceiling and supersonic cruise speeds in excess of Mach 1.8. Compared to that, the F-35 can just barely touch Mach 1.6 in full afterburner. Further, the F-22 possesses excellent maneuverability for close and visual range dogfights it crushes the competition in terms of turn rate, radius, angle of attack and energy addition at all altitudes. Whereas a four-ship flight of Raptors cruising at high supersonic speeds in the rarefied atmosphere above 50,000 feet can effectively choose when and where to fight, a flight of slower, Lower-flying F-35s might find themselves forced to react to better performing enemy planes if they are not careful. Moreover, the F-35 does not have the speed or altitude to impart as much launch energy to the AIM-120 air-to-air missile as the Raptor can, which means the missiles will have less range when fired from a JSF. Nor can the F-35 carry as many air-to-air -air missiles which is a problem given that digital radio frequency memory jammers can wreak havoc with the MRAM's guidance system. Close in, the JSF does not have the maneuverability of the Raptor or even a F-16 or F-A-18. If forced into a dogfight, an American F-35 pilot's superior skills and experience might be the only factor that might save him or her from being shot down. The fact is that an F-35 in stealthy configuration armed only with internal weapons cannot currently carry the AIM-9X high off foresight missile. If the AIM-9X were one day integrated into the weapons phase, it would come at the cost of an AIM-120 rail, which is arguably a better weapon for an aircraft like the F-35. Basically, an F-35 pilot should avoid a close-in fight at all costs. It is highly unlikely that a U.S. Joint Force Air Component Commander would assign an air superiority mission to an F-35 unit if alternatives were available. But given the tiny fleet of Raptors and dwindling F-15C fleet, it is possible that the JFACC could be forced to use the F-35 as an air superiority asset. However, 
That being said, the real threat to American air power in most regions around the world is not enemy air power, but rather advanced enemy integrated air defense systems.